The intriguing theme of animal consciousness or their ability to perceive and be self-aware forms the focus of this narrative. Much like humans, animals have the ability to experience sensations, have a sense of self, and are aware of their surroundings. Their consciousness, however subjective it might be, has been a topic of debate among various philosophers. However, due to linguistic barriers, it becomes difficult to decipher the level of an animal's consciousness. This situation often leads to misconceptions such as the misguided belief that animals lack feelings or that their lives lack value, which leniently allows for their mistreatment. For instance, René Descartes, the renowned 17th century French philosopher, faced criticism for justifying the maltreatment of animals by claiming that only humans possess consciousness. Philosophers who consider subjective experience as the crux of consciousness typically conclude that the understanding of animal consciousness is a challenge. This concept was specifically emphasized by the American philosopher Thomas Nagel in What Is It Like to Be a Bat, where he argued that it is impossible to truly understand an animal's experience without being that animal, however. This approach was disregarded as incoherent by thinkers like cognitive scientist Douglas Hofstadt. Contrarily, many ethologists and psychologists assert that animals do possess consciousness, supporting their argument with behaviors that suggest animals are capable of believing in something they cannot directly perceive. The quest to understand animal consciousness has spanned over a century. Harvey Carr, an American functional psychologist, suggested in 1927 that a comprehensive understanding of animal consciousness would depend upon understanding it in humans. First, the exploration of this field has significantly advanced over the years. In 2012, the Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness, signed by a group of neuroscientists, declared that humans aren't uniquely privileged with neurological structures that generate consciousness. The declaration included that various non-human animals, including mammals, birds, and other species like octopuses, also possess these neurological constructs. Eminent philosophers and scientists, particularly from sociobiology, computer science, evolutionary psychology, and neurosciences, contend that the mind is not separate from the body since there's no empirically verifiable convergence between the non-physical mind and its physical manifestation. This approach has problematic implications for dualism. Moving on to the theory of epiphenomenalism, it suggests that mental phenomena are either a consequence of the brain's physical processes or are jointly the effects of a shared cause. The belief that our emotions, thoughts, and sensations cause physical reactions is deemed partly illusory, for instance. Fear doesn't directly cause a racing heart. Both are indications of the same physiological origin, often prompted by an authentic external threat. The origins of epiphenomenalism are linked to the post-Cartesian effort to unravel the enigma of Cartesian dualism, the interaction between mind and body, Thinkers like Lamatry, Leibniz, and Spinoza initiated this trend. The notion that conscious behavior doesn't rely on the animal's consciousness, even in human, like species, was first suggested by Lamatry, 1745, soon echoed by Cabanas, 1802, and further explained by Hodgson, 1870, and Huxley, 1874. Huxley, 1874, Huxley, 1874, even likened the mind to a train whistle. Epiphenomenalism found its niche within methodological or scientific behaviorism. Eminent early 20th century scientific behavior, including Pavlov, Watson, and Skinner, aimed at defining laws that explain the stimuli-response interplay without involving mental phenomena by allowing for the existence of the mind. Behaviorists managed to adopt epiphenomenalism without denying the existence of internal mental phenomena. However, by the 1960s, scientific behaviorism faced significant challenges, giving rise to the cognitive revolution Jerry Fodor. Part of this revolution rejected epiphenomenalism and stood by the efficacy of the mind. He even coined the term epiphobia, fear of becoming an epiphenomenalist. In his essay on the hypothesis that animals are automata, Thomas Henry Huxley defended the epiphenomenalist theory, stating consciousness is a causally ineffective byproduct of neural activities, comparing it to a steam whistle on a locomotive engine. This notion faced opposition from William James in his essay, Are We Automata? Through his evolutionary argument for mind-brain interaction, James proposed that consciousness, shaped and maintained by natural selection, must have had a survival utility itself which it only could if it was productive Karl Popper made a similar argument in his book The Self and Its Brain. The Institute of Science and Policy of the Humane Society of the United States launched a scholarly publication 
Animal Sentience, in 2015, focused on research dedicated to consciousness and similar topics. Understanding consciousness has been tricky and has posed numerous challenges for many researchers such as neurologists, ethologists, cognitive neuroscientists, philosophers, psychologists, and psychiatrists becoming a cross-disciplinary task. In his 1976 writings, Richard Dawkins considered the existence of subjective consciousness resulting from evolutionary simulation a profound enigma in the realm of modern biology. Fast forward to 2004. Eight neuroscientists confessed in human brain function that they were still far from defining consciousness, stating that they remained stumped about how consciousness could stem from brain activity or if it could be generated in non-biological systems, such as computers. They further stressed that consciousness as a scientific term did not have a precise definition. Just yet, they indicated its imminent emergence, but noted that achieving precision at that time was still premature. Some definitions of consciousness are awareness of external objects or oneself, subjectivity, wakefulness, ability to experience or feel, possession of selfhood, and the executive control system of the mind, even though defining it is a challenge. Many philosophers believe that there's a generally understood intuition about consciousness. According to Max Vellmans and Susan Schneider in The Blackwell Companion to Consciousness, everything we are aware of at any given instant forms our consciousness which they describe as a familiar yet mysterious aspect of our lives. Other related terms often used ambiguously include awareness, self-awareness, self-consciousness, and sentience awareness in biological psychology is considered as a human's or an animal's perception and cognitive response to a situation or event. Self-awareness signifies the capacity for introspection and individuality from one's surroundings or others. Self-consciousness refers to a heightened self-awareness or a preoccupation with oneself as distinguished from the philosophical state of being aware of oneself as a unique entity. Finally, sentience indicates the ability to be cognizant of one's surroundings or to have subjective experiences, offering a more minimalistic interpretation of consciousness. Qualia denotes personal instances of subjective conscious experiences. It's crucial to distinguish it from self-awareness, the latter being the perception of oneself as an individual entity. The mirror test is occasionally used as a practical gauge of self-awareness, but its validity is arguable, especially considering the development of robots that seemingly pass this exam. Neuroscience has revealed significant correlations between brain activity and subjective conscious experiences, prompting many to propose that the study of the brain will ultimately unravel the mystery of consciousness itself. Despite these advances, the hard problem of directly relating consciousness to brain activity remains unsolved. Traditionally, debates regarding the mind and consciousness have been thought to be a philosophical purview beyond the reach of scientific exploration yet. Recent trends in neuroscience have been shifting towards a scientific approach to understanding consciousness. Neuroscientists like Antonio Damasio and Gerald Edelman have pioneered research into the neural correlates of self and consciousness. Damasio's work established the critical role of emotions in high-level cognition, while Edelman formulated a scientific framework for studying consciousness nevertheless. The conundrum that researchers confront is deciphering how consciousness originates from neural computation. However, Eugene Linden in his book The Parrot's Lament argues for the existence of animal consciousness. He writes about numerous instances of animal behavior demonstrating intelligence that exceeds commonly held boundaries of animal consciousness. Philosopher Daniel Dennett, on the other hand, maintains that consciousness isn't inborn or fixed, but rather it is ingrained by human culture. He also argues against the notion of consciousness being an all-or, nothing phenomenon. Dennett suggests that the distinctions between humans and other species are vast and speculating about animal consciousness. Seems baseless, the lack of explorative interest in the nuances of such questions remains a challenge. This new research presents a nuanced way of exploring consciousness and self-conception among animals and human infants, a subject of hot debate often characterized as the animal mind's discussion. In a study involving rhesus monkeys, neuroscientist Ben Haim and his team were successfully able to dissociate between conscious awareness and non-conscious perception in animals, which resulted in contrasting behaviors depending on whether the monkeys were aware or unaware of presented stimuli a phenomenon that also occurs in humans. Renowned researcher Gordon G. Gallup is often credited for the notable mirror test, which involves marking an animal or human infant whilst in slumber or sedated. 
The beings then awake to see their reflections in a mirror and their behavior towards identifying and responding towards the mark is studied as an indication of self-awareness over the last three decades. Various species have been identified as being capable of recognizing themselves in mirrors. Self-recognition was once thought to be peculiar to animals with a neocortex. But a 2008 study revealed that even the neocortex, less magpies could recognize themselves, a finding that suggested birds and mammals develop such cognitive abilities independently, despite inheriting the same brain components from their common ancestor roughly 300 million years ago. Though not entirely definitive, self-recognition in magpies, observed through their performance in mirror and mark tests, appears somewhat similar to that in apes, dolphins, and elephants. The researchers chose magpies specifically given their empathetic traits, seen as a likely precursor to self-awareness. The study is viewed to contribute significantly towards understanding the principles driving cognitive evolution. However, even among chimpanzees, recorded clarity and self-recognition isn't always 100. It is approximately 75 among young adults and less in younger and older individuals. Monkeys and certain bird species have exhibited mirror-induced explorative and social behavior, but there have also been signs of self-directed behaviors resulting from mirror interactions. Investigating the consciousness of non-human animals leans heavily into studying their communication, potentially revealing their capacity for thought and self-awareness. Previous research engaged with child speech development to understand cognition, a method that some scientists now apply to the voluntary speech of animals, such as macaws, such as macaw. Examining data sets of animal communication, like the language of bottlenose dolphins, using algorithms like Ziff's law, might indicate the existence of intelligent natural communication. Furthermore, the capacity for a non-human animal to experience pain or distress might be indicative of consciousness as well. After all, suffering is a conscious experience. In this context, non-volitional or maladaptive responses to adverse stimuli are considered signs of pain, mirrored by transmarginal inhibition or mental breakdown, a phenomenon notable in both humans and non-human animals. American cosmologist Carl Sagan articulated how humanity's historical tendencies to disregard animal suffering stems from a need to ease guilt associated with using animals for our own purposes. Intellect, often considered a marker for the capability to suffer, is mistakenly equated with brain size, minimizing non-human animal suffering in comparison to humans. However, observing non-human animal behavior counters such misconceptions. Sentient animals evidently display a preference for pleasurable experiences, much akin to humans. However, the academia grapples with the demarcation lines separating organisms capable and incapable of feeling pain. As Oxford University's philosophy professor Justin Lieber points out, different perspectives exist on this spectrum. Montaigne posits consciousness even to spiders and ants, whilst discrediting it for sponges nevertheless. The discourse is far from conclusive, leaving room for ongoing exploration into animals' perceived subjective experiences. When a plant sustains an injury, it swiftly goes into protective mode, releasing volatile chemicals. Some of these chemicals have been found to cause nearby plants to enhance their own defenses prematurely and others to attract the predators of the creatures potentially causing harm to the plants. The plant also begins internal repair and fortification processes. Scientists are still decrypting the molecular intricacies of these processes, but they appear to involve signaling molecules mobilizing the plant's cells, even activating the entire genome, which starts generating proteins associated with defense. It's logical to ponder. Why would any organism willingly surrender its life for our nourishment? Organisms are evolutionary designed to resist being wiped out of species survival would be short-lived if its members exhibited no concern about being killed. Moving from plants to animals, cognitive bias is a known phenomenon where animals exhibit judgment-judgment deviations, drawing unrealistic inferences about other creatures and situations. This leads animals to form their own unique social realities based on their interpretation of data. This is exemplified by the common question, is the glass half empty or half full, interpreted as a reflection of optimism versus pessimism. Evidence of cognitive biases has been found in a variety of specimens, including rates, dogs, monkeys, sheep, birds, and bees. Scientist Joseph Ledeau strongly suggests avoiding language stemming from human sentiments when describing brain functionalities in animals. Labeling brain circuits that detect and respond to threats as fear circuits tends to suggest that these circuits generate fear. 
Lado recommends rebranding Pavlovian fear conditioning as Pavlovian threat conditioning to distance the concept from the idea that fear is being instilled in rates or humans. His theory focuses on survival functions facilitated by survival circuits designed to keep organisms alive, generate emotions while all organisms can respond to threats. Only organisms aware of their own brain's activities can experience fear. Fear is a conscious process, produced the same way as any other conscious experience, through cortical circuits that focus on specific forms of brain activity. Neuroscience is the scientific exploration of the nervous system an active field that cuts across various disciplines. It has recently expanded to cover molecular, cellular, developmental, structural, functional, evolutionary, computational, and medical elements of the nervous system theoretical neural network studies are complemented by techniques that image sensory and motor tasks in the brain. Within the field of neuroscience, researching the neural underpinnings of human consciousness is a prevalent research area. This involves investigating the minimal neuronal events and mechanisms required for each individual conscious perception. Key to this is discerning which components of the brain are necessary for generating this experience. In 1998, a review conducted by Francis Crick and Christoph Koch suggested using sensory neuroscience as a foundational approach for conducting consciousness studies. As part of this, the duo proposed various experiments to test different conjectures within this line of research. One of the unique and defining characteristics of humans is our unparalleled ability to learn. We often require conscious effort to acquire new behaviors and skills, which, over time, can become so ingrained that they take place without conscious control. For instance, playing a Beethoven sonata or riding a motorcycle on a winding road require finely tuned motor skills and sensory motor skills and sensory motor Coordination such behaviors can be performed because the subprograms at work can function with little to minimal conscious control. Our growing understanding of consciousness is propelled by advancements in molecular biology methods used by neuroscientists to manipulate neurons. This development, complemented by increasingly sensitive psychophysical and brain imaging techniques, may pave the way toward a more rational comprehension of consciousness. The neocortex, a section of the brain of mammals is pivotal to these discussions. It comprises gray matter, neuronal cell bodies, and unmyelinated fibers, encircling the white matter in the cerebrum. This intricate part of the brain, consisting of folded grooves that increase the cortical surface area, has different lobes performing varied functions. For instance, the occipital lobe houses the primary visual cortex, while the temporal lobe holds the primary auditory cortex, the neocortex has additional subdivisions devoted to more specific cognitive processes. Of note is that the neocortex is evolutionarily the most recent part of the cerebral cortex to develop. The complexities of cognitive attention, consciousness, and metacognition shape our understanding of the world around us. These concepts illustrate how our brain focuses on certain aspects while disregarding others, how our cultural background influences that attention, and how our neural responses change when focusing this forms an integral part of our understanding and interaction with our environment. Attention, in essence, is about devoting cognitive resources to certain stimuli while blocking out the rest. This is not a one-size-fits. All phenomenon, as the way individuals focus largely depends on the cultural and institutional environment they were nurtured in researches highlight enhanced neural firing as evidence of attention as neurons respond more intensely when focused on a specific stimulus. Alongside the concept of attention is the idea of extended consciousness or an individual's autobiographical self-perception. This idea, brought into the limelight by Antonio Damasio, proposes that animals with significant memory and reasoning capacity possess a conscious sense of their past and future selves. This awareness arises from a flow of information from the environment and internal neural memory related structures. Metacognition or one's ability to reflect upon one's cognitive processes adds another layer of complexity. Essentially, it is about knowing how and when to employ certain strategies in problem, solving, or learning. Metacognition is believed to be a unique characteristic of sapient species that enable them to consciously understand their thinking interestingly. There are instances where certain animals show evidence of metacognition, though the results in birds remain inconclusive. A study conducted in 2007 also hinted at potential metacognition in rates, though it was debated whether this was a result of simple conditioning or a behavioral economic model. 
Overall, attention, extended consciousness, and metacognition are crucial cognitive processes that define our interaction and understanding of the world. The past, the present, and the future through selective focus, self-perception, and introspective analysis. Researchers like Marco Iacoboni of UCLA argue that mirror neurons in our brain help us understand others' actions and intentions. They found that these neurons can even determine whether a person intends to drink a cup of tea or clear it off the table Iacoboni and his colleagues suggest that mirror neurons could be responsible for our emotional empathy. Vilayanur S. Ramachandran speculates that these neurons might also provide a neurological basis for self-awareness. Current theories suggest that the human brain evolved to develop consciousness, a trait that possibly improves our chances of survival, however. There are differing opinions on when exactly consciousness emerged during biological evolution. Donald Griffin's book Animal Minds proposes a gradual evolution of consciousness. John Eccles writes that specific anatomical and physical adaptations in the mammalian brain might have led to consciousness. Some argue that the recursive circuitry that underlies consciousness is much more ancient, having evolved initially in earlier non-mammalian species. The reason? To conserve energy and better interact with our environments? Others suggest that consciousness evolved to allow us to think about ourselves. For example, tree-climbing apes might have developed consciousness to better maneuver through the trees. Tests show that certain apes, but not all primates, exhibit self-awareness, supporting this theory. Consciousness commonly refers to voluntary action, awareness, or wakefulness. However, even voluntary behavior has unconscious components. Many cognitive processes lie beneath our conscious awareness. Some behaviors start conscious, then become automatic over time, for instance. Riding a bike is a skill learned consciously, but performed unconsciously. Gerald Edelman's Neural Darwinism, a large-scale brain function theory proposed in 1978, distinguishes between what he calls primary and secondary consciousness. Secondary, consciousness refers to an individual's capacity to recall their personal history and plan for the future. This awareness of one's own consciousness is considered to exceed primary consciousness, defined as a simple awareness containing perception and emotion experienced by most animals. Secondary consciousness involves self-reflective awareness, abstract thinking, volition, and metacognition. Edelman's theory of consciousness centers around two brain organizations. The brainstem and limbic systems focused on essential body functions and survival and the thalamocortical system which communicates with sensory receptors and voluntary muscles, he proposes that the evolution of these two systems allowed animals to develop adaptive behaviors. Other experts contest Edelman's theory and propose primary consciousness may have originated from basic vegetative systems of the brain. They suggest that primal emotions and sensations arising from internal and surface sensors indicating immediate threats to survival like lack of air, thirst, hunger, pain, or abrupt temperature changes could be the genesis of consciousness. They argue this is supported by neurological evidence linking consciousness of thirst with certain areas of the brain and question the significance of the cortex in primary consciousness. They cite studies that demonstrate cortical damage in animals or absence of a cortex in humans does not necessarily eradicate consciousness. They highlight the indispensability of brainstem mechanisms to consciousness, while accepting that higher forms of consciousness rely on the cortex and complex brain communication. Animals with primary consciousness possess long-term memory, but lack narrative capability and are limited to addressing immediate scenarios in their remembered present. The evolution of consciousness, particularly in mammals, has led to increased complexity. Introducing secondary consciousness, this level of consciousness represents an evolutionary advancement beyond those animals without such capabilities. In later stages of evolution, advanced reentrant circuits were established, which connected functions such as linguistic and semantic performance to our memory systems. This evolution marked the arrival of secondary consciousness. Ursula Voss from Universität Bonn suggests that this idea of protoconsciousness could provide a plausible explanation for the self-recognition capabilities observed in birds. Voss adds that many bird species possess intricate language systems, suggesting they could develop secondary consciousness during REM sleep. Don Keegan from the University of Alberta found the concept intriguing noting that continued exploration of consciousness using animal models exhibiting various types of consciousness could illuminate the diverse forms of reflection found in the modern world for those supporting the concept of 
Secondary consciousness, self-recognition, is a key component serving as an essential defining measure. Yet what draws the most intrigue is the evolutionary implication brought about by the ability for self-recognition in animals and children. The mirror test is commonly used to test self-awareness. At a 2012 conference held at the University of Cambridge, a group of neuroscientists signed the Cambridge Declaration on Consciousness. In the accompanying document, reductions and changes in preconceptions in the field were emphasized due to rapid development in techniques and strategies for studying human and non-human consciousness. They asserted specifically that the neural structures involved in emotional responses are not limited to the cortex. It has been noted that subcortical structures involved in emotional states in humans also play a critical part in animal behavior. When the same brain areas are artificially stimulated, similar behavioral and emotional responses are witnessed in humans and non-human animals alike. They further contended, based on studies, that networks corresponding to states of attentiveness, sleep, and decision-making have been evolutionary constants since as far back as the invertebrate radiation. Taking drugs known to affect human consciousness can similarly alter the behavior of non-human animals. Evidence suggests that awareness in humans is linked to activity in the cortex of the brain. There's a possibility that early cortical or subcortical processing, such as visual awareness, also contributes to this the fact that human and animal emotions stem from similar brain networks suggests a shared evolutionary history of basic emotional experiences. The traditional view is of a nature's ladder, with animals on each rung and humans at the top. A more nuanced perspective acknowledges that different animals possess different cognitive abilities shaped by their environmental niches rather than any supposed hierarchy. Dogs were traditionally classified as not self-aware based on the mirror test. However, dogs and many other species do not rely heavily on sight. A 2015 study pointed towards the sniff test of self-recognition as evidence of self, awareness in dogs. Roberto Cazola Gatti, the biologist behind the study, suggested this necessitates a shift from an anthropocentric view of consciousness to one which recognizes species-specific nuances. Research on captive gray parrots notably on an individual named Alex, demonstrated their capability to understand and use simple human words abstractly. According to several scientists, they perform cognitive tasks on par with dolphins, chimpanzees, and even human toddlers. Another African gray, Ian Kesey, reportedly had a vocabulary of over 950 words which she creatively used. In 2011, a research led by Dalila Bovet of Paris West University, Nanterre La Defense, revealed that gray parrots were capable of cooperation to a certain degree. They could solve problems that required synchronized action to obtain food. The parrots exhibited individual preferences for their partners, suggesting complex social dynamics. This exploration underlines the fascinating evolution of cognitive intelligence across diverse species, particularly magpies, carrion crows, and octopuses, unveiling its roots and shedding light on complex neural mechanisms behind it. The choice of subject species, such as magpies, stems from their empathetic lifestyle and self-awareness capabilities. Remarkably, a 2020 study highlighted that carrion crows demonstrated a correlation between neuronal response and perception of stimuli, a significant indication of avian sensory consciousness without the need for a cerebral cortex. These findings strengthen the proposition that foundations for conscious perception could have evolved way before our last known common ancestor, or independently, in birds a parallel study hinted towards the bird's pallium, exhibiting resembling traits to the mammalian cortex. Octopuses, in contrast, stand out in the invertebrates species owing to their superior intelligence. Despite debates around the cognitive abilities, their ability to maneuver through mazes and problem, Solving tasks reveals their adept short and long-term memory. Octopuses own an intricate nervous system, out of which two-thirds inhabit the nerve cords in their arms, enabling them to perform complex reflex actions independently from brain inputs, unlike vertebrates. Their complex motor skills are regulated by a unique non-somatropic system, evident in large-brained invertebrates. Lab studies demonstrate their capability of distinguishing between multiple shapes and patterns, showing evidence of observational learning, which is yet a contested subject. Their behavior often mirrors playful tendencies, escaping from their aquariums and exploring other environments. Not only have they been seen boarding onto fishing boats to feed on crabs, but certain species like the veined octopus have exhibited advanced skills like shell manipulation to create shelter.
Traditional cultures and folk tales across the world, especially in Jainism and India, resonate with the idea of animal spirits, crediting them with consciousness and decision, making abilities. This spiritual worldview consider living organisms, including animals, plants, and microscopic organisms, as conscious beings, highlighting the incredible diversity and complexity of cognitive intelligence across various life forms.